The closure of a long-established store in Hong Kong has surprisingly stirred a vast number of netizens. This store, the Malaysian Chinese restaurant located in Jordan, was founded in 1969 and is particularly famous for its Hainanese chicken rice. More importantly, it has been a filming location for several Hong Kong movies, such as Throwdown, starring Aaron Kwok and Tony Leung Ka Fai, and Happy Birthday, starring Louis Ku and Renee Liu. In recent years, many old stores that carry the memories of numerous Hong Kong dramas. Dramas have shut down. The Malaysian Chinese restaurant, with a history of 55 years, posted a notice at the beginning of 2024, stating that it would suspend its operation after January 31st due to the end of its lease and a shortage of staff. Netizens have left comments like, "What a pity! So many memories are tied to this place." I used to love going there for meals when dating, then heading to the Golden Harvest Cinema for a movie. In the blink of an eye, that was 20 or 30 years ago. Alas, I still remember the Christmas dinners my parents took us there when I was a kid. After dancing at the Chim Sha Sui Chinese Palace nightclub in the 80s, we go to Malaysian Chinese restaurant for supper. Forty something years ago, my dad often took me there for the banana split. For some reason, my memories of going there with my dad are only until I was seven. It was also where I had my first job interview. Nostalgic. The manager was such a nice person. Now we can only seek memories in old Hong Kong films. The blogger who shared this video commented, "It's chaos. Some shops closed not because of bad business, but because everyone is panicky and wants to shut down to emigrate." Chang Kee Cafe on Fukuoka Street in Sham Shui Po might be one such example. Having been in operation for nearly 70 years, Chang Kee Cafe still retains the layout of a traditional cold drinking house called Bing Set, bringing a nostalgic flavor. Just before the Lunar New Year in 2024, the owner decided to close down, making their signature fried chicken leg and Hong Kong style milk tea forever missed. It is known that Chang Kee Cafe has been privately owned for many years. With the owner consistently emphasizing that it would not be sold, however, in early 2022, it was suddenly put on the market for 20 million Hong Kong dollars, suggesting that the owner had planned for retirement. Yet, in the current market conditions in Hong Kong, who would dare to take the risk of buying it for 20 million dollars? When interviewed by Hong Kong One reporters, this male owner was unwilling to face the camera, his tone filled with helplessness. There's nothing we can do if we can't continue. We have to close down.、Uh, what else is there to say? Just want to thank our customers for their support over the years, right? A female customer said, "It's tragic. The restaurant itself was operating so well." Hong Kong 又有一间老字号倒闭啊 Another restaurant with a long-established reputation in Hong Kong has closed down. The luxury bakery known as Chow Yun Fat's favorite bakery has announced its closure. Chow Yun Fat, who has been a patron for over 40 years, also made an appearance, expressing his regret over the bakery's closure. Its secret to deliciousness lies in preserving the flavor of Hong Kong's dai pai dong from the 60s and 70s, a taste that has become extremely rare in the market, attracting a large number of celebrities and stars. Andrew Leong, the fourth partner of Stanley Ho, Macau's godfather and a king of gambling, not only became a regular but also became a good friend of the owner. Sadly, despite the bustling business with Chong Fat Noodles, it could not withstand the changes of time. As the site of the stall required redevelopment, the licensee intended to return the license to the government and chose to close down. Survived the pandemic, but couldn't survive reopening, rent increases, and redevelopment. A phrase that echoes the helplessness and sorrow of countless Hong Kong businesses. Chung Fat Noodles in Sham Shui Po, which started from a wooden cart, has now been passed down to the second generation, run by the Ma family. Their hallmark has been the consistency of their original flavor for decades. Unfortunately, after more than 70 years, Chung Fat Noodles couldn't escape the fate of being engulfed by the tides of time. In the summer of 2023, Chung Fat Noodles was notified by the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department and property developers that the site of the stall had to be reclaimed for development plans. One of the owners, Masri Chor, said, "We have tried our best to maintain the taste and keep the shop open, putting in a lot of effort." But we are powerless. He expressed regret that from a young age, the three brothers had been taught by their father the traditional methods of handcrafting fish balls and wontons. There has been a trend towards automation and technological advancements in China's food industry, 
and a shift towards machine production in many of Hong Kong's eateries due to labor and cost considerations. However, the three brothers have dedicated themselves for decades to uphold their father's legacy of excellence. They have steadfastly adhered to the most traditional techniques, taking great care to handcraft each ingredient with precision. Wontons, a traditional Hong Kong delicacy, are universally beloved from toddlers to the elderly. Ma Sui Por, the eldest brother responsible for making the wontons, insists on maintaining the traditional flavor through all manual processes. We use nostalgic methods. Nowadays, people avoid hard work. Machines can mix the meat in less than five minutes, but we insist on hand chopping pork for 45 minutes, slowly slicing and dicing the fat and lean meat. Is a very time-consuming process. Hong Kong is hailed as a culinary paradise, precisely because many eateries uphold the spirit of Chung Fat noodles, striving for perfection, making every dish the most exquisite. Unfortunately, having survived the pandemic and reopening, Chung Fat noodles could not overcome redevelopment. The Ma family ultimately had no choice but to surrender their license and cease operations in November 2023. In Hong Kong, countless characteristic Dai Pai Dong like Chong Fat Noodle have had to close down due to government redevelopment. Dai Pai Dong iconic outdoor food stalls are a distinctive feature of Hong Kong's culinary scene, celebrated both locally and internationally. The charm of these stalls for Hong Kong residents, particularly among food connoisseurs, is their commitment to preserving traditional flavors. This dedication draws diners to these stalls, where they are willing to endure the summer heat and sweat while eating, just to experience authentic tastes. Unfortunately, despite their efforts to retain original flavors, many of these venerable food stalls have not been able to avoid demolition and redevelopment. Hindered by various challenges from relocating, they have been forced to close down. Sadly, fading from Hong Kong's culinary landscape. During three years of the pandemic, coupled with the Hong Kong government's strict adherence to the Chinese Communist Party's zero COVID policy, Hong Kong endured a bleak and prolonged three years of silence. In January 2023, the Hong Kong government finally announced the reopening of borders. However, what awaited businesses was not a dawn of hope. But a surge of closures. The 50-year-old True Key Seafood Restaurant is located next to Prince Edward MTR Station in a pre-war Tong Lao tenement buildings built in the late 19th century. It is rated as a Grade Three historic building and is known for the neon sign of its restaurant name, a landmark of Prince Edward. For the past two to three decades, Mr. Zhou, the owner of True Key, has been working from dawn till three or four a.m. almost every day. Personally attending to every aspect of the business, even during the three years of the pandemic, while witnessing many old shops closing down, he still gritted his teeth and persisted. I work 14 hours a day, and my monthly income is only 15,000 Hong Kong dollars. I've survived the pandemic this way, working like this every day. Mr. Zhou said the decision to close came suddenly. The landlord suddenly notified us that the rent would be double, with the current business environment. We are powerless. He complained that the government has not implemented policies to regulate rent increases. There are no regulations on how much landlords can raise the rent. In other words, landlords can raise the rent by however much they like, and we are just left vulnerable to be taken advantage of. The reopening of borders between mainland China and Hong Kong not only failed to increase business for Hong Kong's eateries, but also led to a significant loss of local customers as many Hong Kongers went north to spend in mainland China. Chu Qi finally bowed out on August 31, 2023, after 50 years, and with the closure of the restaurant, the iconic Chu Qi Seafood Restaurant neon sign, a landmark of Prince Edward, was also turned off. Neon signs, a unique living signboard of Hong Kong, were popular photo spots long before the concept of checking in existed on social media. With the closure of businesses, these neon signs are being turned off one by one. Furthermore, the Hong Kong government seems intent on out with the old, in with the new, not preserving but allowing these historically valuable city characteristics to fall into disrepair or be demolished under the pretext of lack of maintenance. Now Hong Kong's neon signs are slowly disappearing. In addition to the extinguishing of neon signs, many eateries in Hong Kong have also experienced the torment of closing and reopening in a non-ending cycle of repeat. 
located in Kowloon, Mido Cafe has a history of over 70 years. This two-story old-style corner Cha Chan Teng Hong Kong-style cafe has been a filming location for numerous movies and TV dramas, such as Revolving Doors of Vengeance and Street Fighters. It has also become a popular spot for tourists to visit. Mido Cafe is known for its baked spare rib rice and the drink red bean and lotus seed ice, offering a menu that stands out from the typical cha chan teng. Many tourists make a special trip to the cafe to experience the traditional flavors of Hong Kong. Mido Cafe had to close in March 2022 due to the pandemic and managed to reopen in mid-May for a while. However, by mid-July of the same year, passers-by noticed a sign outside the restaurant in six different languages bidding farewell to the public. On October 28 of the same year, Mido reopened again, replacing its traditional ceiling fans with air conditioning. However, the reopening of Mido faced harsh criticism from local diners, who unanimously felt that the quality of the food has significantly declined. It's expensive and not worth it. The only redeeming feature of the restaurant is its nostalgic decor. Having survived the pandemic, the reopening, and the renovation, can Mido survive the taste of its customers? At least for now, it seems Mido cannot deceive the locals' taste. Whether it can continue to operate by attracting foreign tourists with its past reputation remains to be seen. Dear patrons, first of all, thank you for your support of Lin Huang Tea House over the years. We regret to temporarily say goodbye to everyone. The owner has done his best to support Lin Huang Tea House through the pandemic, but unfortunately, we could not withstand it and had to come to this stage. We hope to have the opportunity to meet everyone again in the future, if fate allows. Lin Hung Tea House made this announcement on its social media at 12.30 a.m. on August 9, 2022. Lin Hung Tea House is the only remaining tea house in Hong Kong with over 100 years of history. Opened in 1889, it originally started as a shop in Guangzhou, China, mainly producing and selling pastries. Later, it moved to central Hong Kong, preserving the traditional operations and design of a tea house. The movie Viva La Amor was filmed here. The award-winning movie In the Mood for Love also held its press conference here, chosen by director Wong Kar Wai for its nostalgic atmosphere. At that time, the film's lead actors, Tony Leung and Maggie Chung, attended in costume. Ms. Ho, born in the 1990s, said in an interview with Business Focus, It has a nostalgic atmosphere and a lot of history. Its closure feels like Hong Kong has lost a part of itself. Mr. Fong said, I've witnessed its ups and downs. There have been many obstacles in its development in recent years. It's really hard to let go because we have emotional attachments to this place. For someone of our age, it's not just about having a meal. It's truly a pity. Lin Hung Tea House temporarily ceased operations in 2019 due to the expiration of its lease. In March 2020, the fourth generation of the Yan family took over the tea house again. But after two years of operation, it finally succumbed to the pandemic and announced its official closure in August. Since then, the premises have remained vacant. In February 2024, there were reports that the owner originally planned to redevelop the site for commercial use, but then shifted to a project aiming for a 30-story building with an estimated 175 residential units. However, since the implementation of the national security law in Hong Kong in 2020, along with other factors, the real estate and stock markets in Hong Kong have been in a continuous decline. During the 2024 Lunar New Year, Centerline Property Agency's top 10 estates in Hong Kong even recorded zero transactions over the four-day public holiday, setting a historic low. In this context, if the owner still wishes to redevelop the site into residential units, one can only say good luck. Is redevelopment truly a way to bring new hope to Hong Kong? Let's take a look at Kun Tong, located on the eastern side of the Kowloon Peninsula. Yuan Chi Yan, the founder of the Living in Kun Tong Facebook page, is a conservationist in Hong Kong. He entered the Kun Tong community as early as 2005 and has been observing the changes in the area for the past 17 years. In May 2023, Yuan Chi Yan criticized the government on Facebook. 
The Urban Renewal Authority's redevelopment in Kuntong has turned a shopping mall only two years after its opening into a dead mall, with a significant number of stores closing down. The bustling streets were eradicated solely for the construction of luxury housing, not for the community. He lamented, the heart of Kuntong has been obliterated by the Urban Renewal Authority, with Yuanman Square and old shops disappearing, replaced by the Urban Renewal Authority and Sino Group's shopping mall YM. Has Kuntong truly been revitalized? Locals say that the newly opened mall has become a dead space within just two years, with 40 percent of the shops closing down, including the supermarket in Mu Shop. He questioned the government, does redevelopment necessarily mean improvement? Is just the Urban Renewal Authority's wishful thinking, eradicating old shops and businesses, making the heart of Kowloon East, Yuanman Square disappear? The Urban Renewal Authority only sees land sales, hoping to make big money. Whether the mall operates well or can sustain its business becomes the developer's responsibility, with the Urban Renewal Authority remaining uninvolved. The destruction from redevelopment is permanent. Yuanman Square has disappeared. While the Urban Renewal Authority makes money from building luxury houses, the damage to the community is everlasting. How many more old districts will suffer from this short-sighted approach? In the future, the Urban Renewal Authority plans to launch large-scale redevelopments in Yaoxin Meng and Sham Shui Po, similarly eradicating streets and creating more dead malls, with Hong Kong people bearing the loss. Beyond eateries, many traditional Hong Kong stores have also been closing down. In 2023, Hong Kong Food Products Limited, once the second largest wholesale bakery in Hong Kong that manufactured locally, closed down in August. Their signature square loaf bread and sesame rolls will disappear from the Hong Kong culinary scene, marking another loss for Hong Kong manufacturing. In the first month of 2024, the old shop Bing Ki Coppersmith in Yao Ma Te announced its impending closure. Many Hong Kongers are unaware that the gongs used in the annual Hong Kong horse racing opening ceremony are made by the shop. A Japanese artisan even traveled far to learn from the master craftsman at Bing Ki. Handmade coppersmith is an art and folk wisdom nearly lost. Some Hong Kong families still use the copperware from the store to make porridge and soup. Unfortunately, handmade copperware may become extinct. With the loss of news and freedom of speech, today's Hong Kong can't even accommodate a small bookstore. Mount Zero Books is one such example. Mount Zero Books, an independent bookstore located in Sheng Wan, Hong Kong, was founded by Sharon Chen in May 2018. During the 2019 movement against the extradition bill, the store joined the three suspensions to stop work, stop classes, and stop the markets by closing for a day on June 12 of that year. Perhaps due to political reasons, Mount Zero Books received a letter from the Lands Department in September 2023 alleging illegal occupation of land. Sharon Chen cooperated with the government's request, quickly resolving what the government called a legal issue. However, less than three months later, Sharon had to announce on Instagram that Mount Zero is done playing and will close on March 31, 2024. The reason was continuous complaints from a mysterious individual with the bookstore receiving greetings from various departments every week and every letter open contained the word prosecution. Those familiar with Hong Kong politics will know what type of person cannot tolerate even such a small bookstore. Many things in Hong Kong are slowly disappearing or being erased. Traditional and classic cuisine, the dedication and perseverance of restaurant and street food stall owners towards delicious food, traditional crafts passed down through generations, and unique old-style buildings characteristic of Hong Kong, supporting the spiritual sustenance of Hong Kong people. Is this merely the aftermath of an economy ravaged by the pandemic? Ni Kuang, a prolific Hong Kong novelist, once said in his early work, Tracking the Dragon, To destroy a great city, it doesn't have to be a natural disaster. It can also be a man-made disaster. A man-made disaster doesn't necessarily mean war. A few words from a few people and their ignorant actions can cause a great city to die completely. There's no need to destroy the buildings of the great city, no need to kill any of its residents. Even if on the surface the city looks the same as before, as long as the city's original advantages disappear, it can be destroyed. Perhaps this is the best explanation for Hong Kong's decline from prosperity.